back in the United States. We went on a wonderful trip, a vacation that we haven't taken in a while. Um, this is the island of St. Lucia. And it was a beautiful resort, and um, there were beautiful mountains. You, you know, you look at the sun and you say, well, this is the same sun that I can see over the park. And you just like, okay, God, you're just awesome. And um, just to be able to meet the beautiful people that were there, to be able to relax and be at the pool and have food. And I'm sure the pastor will also talk about his experience. Just had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time. And my encouragement for you this morning is don't give up on your long term prayers. Don't give up on your long term plans. <laughs> right? Yes. The things that you're thinking about. Going to college, getting a car, <laughs> or a phone, or a phone, <laughs> <laughs> buying a house, seeing a loved one. How about a, a kidney? Huh? How about a kidney? Amen. Amen. You need a kidney in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Don't give up. What? But don't give up. What? The what? healing that God what? has in store. Even after eight what? years, what? don't give what up. About about owning your own uh, restaurant. Owning your own restaurant. Don't give up. We've got lots of things out here that you're praying about. <laughs> Don't give up. Owning your own business. The seed that God planted in me for us to go to St. Lucia came across because a graduate student came from St. Lucia, the University of Nebraska Lincoln, who's on East Campus. And he said, come to my island of St. Lucia. We've got beautiful beaches. He said, just like that. I was like, well, what the heck? Why not? I've not been to the beaches of St. Lucia. <laughs> and it was one of those things that I didn't even see. I didn't even know what St. Lucia was. Okay? And so I did the work. We did the research. My sister celebrated uh, my own birthday. Because of what God is doing in her life to be able to be there. We had friends that we met, new friends, and my brother and his wife were there. God blessed that time. Pray, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying for new jobs, new homes. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, he hears us when we pray. Uh, I remember praying for my nephew, which we were able to see for many years. And you know what? Happen stance. We were at a basketball tournament. I haven't seen him for several years. And there was a little area out playing basketball. And so don't let anyone tell you that God's not hearing you listening. He knows what we need. And he knows the prayers of our heart. Yes, Amen. So continue to pray. <sighs> and we are blessed when we're back. And so just to continue to think about that um, and the power of prayer in your life, it comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is our way to communicate with God above and pray for the things around us and the people around us that God needs to don't stop praying. So I'm going to come to you from James chapter 5. I'm going to read uh, verses 13 all the way through 20. And it starts with like this. Is any of you in trouble? You should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. And we're going to do that. Is any one of you sick? You should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Therefore, confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, so that you may be healed. Amen? Amen. The prayer of a righteous man is Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. 
Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers, if any one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death mm. and cover over a multitude of sins. My Lord. This is God's word. This is what we believe. It's not Chardonnay. It's God's word. And if you're wondering about who Elijah was, look in the Old Testament. You'll see that prophet and what he did in answering God's call and doing what he was called to do. So God is good. And I'm so thankful for our church and for our pastor here. So this is our month that we started here in person in March. And we are going to be looking at our church anniversary meal. We always talk about the fifth Sunday being our fellowship meal. So that is on Easter Sunday. We will have a celebration of Christ rising from the dead and being in glory and giving us that, that uh, heavenly hope. So we're considering March 24th. So kind of think about that um, after church and having our dinner. So um, I will be reaching out to those people that have helped with our meals in the past and seeing if that will work for us. I know it may not work for everyone, but that's what we're thinking about. So that's what we're planning. So pray on that with us as well. The other thing that we have to celebrate is the baptism. I will on the cave will be baptized at No Greater Love on March 17th at 3.30. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, touch him, Lord. I'm praying, Father God, that you will do what you 
what you need to do in Raymond and through Raymond and his family, Lord Jesus, that will lift you up and give you the honor and the praise. And the praise. We thank you, Father God, for others that are going through chronic sickness and illness, Lord, where there doesn't seem to be a lot of hope, Lord Jesus. But our hope is in you, Lord. So pray for little uh, Naomi Ingram, Father God, that you continue to touch her body, Lord. Give the doctors the wisdom that they need to be able to treat her, Father God. And there's others as well, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah for the sad family, Lord. James is sad for her. She continues to, to strive and take each day being in law school and being chronically in a situation, Lord Jesus. The doctors are also trying to figure it out, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our ultimate healer, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that we can come together at communion Sunday to be able to celebrate at the, at the Lord's table, Lord, as a remembrance of our eternal salvation and fellowship with you, Jesus. I thank you for the pastor and his preparation for the service today, for the word today, for the worship today, Lord. I thank you for traveling mercies, Lord Jesus, to be able to go to an island Lord, and touch people there in the island of God in a way that only you can Thank <laughs> you. 
We thank you that Jesus and he is love. That we're even more grateful that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we're grateful this morning. A grateful people. Excited about what God has done in the person of Jesus Christ. And we're just so thankful this morning for all the things that Charlie mentioned. Traveling mercies. You know, sometimes we think when we get started, we're going to be where we're going. It's not necessarily true. But we love the Lord. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first Yeah. <laughs> 
There's an old saying, some people are looking for love where? In all the wrong places. And I'm here today to tell you that your mom, mom loves you, dad loves you, brothers and sisters love you, but there's nobody going to love you like the Lord. His love is for this everlasting. It's truly an unconditional love. It's truly an unconditional love. And it's, a, it's a love we're all striving to be able to, uh, to emulate, to duplicate. And so we want you to know today, you may not have been loved the way you want to be loved by whomever, but today we offer you a love in Christ Jesus that's not going anywhere. It's going to be with you wherever you go. Praise you, Jesus. So even as we were way over across the waters, as Charlie said, the same sun was in the sky. And the same love that we experienced here was with us there. And so we just thank God for that. And as we are preparing for our, our service, our work, our message here, I just want you to pray with me. And, I, and I've been having something on my heart, and I want you to hold fast to this. I'm thinking about just a concert of prayer over the rest of March. And if you would could join me in this, I, I was thinking about this this morning. I remember at a previous church we did this, and I want to encourage you to do it as well. For the, for the next uh, 28 days, I think there's 31 days this month, if, if you would pray three times a day, from six, between 6.30 and 8.30, between 12.30 and 2.30, and between 6.30 and 9.00 and 8.30. So you have those three time frames, those three time frames in the day, two hours, Somewhere in that two hours, between 6.30 and 8.30, between 12.30 and 2.30, and between 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Take some time in those three two-hour blocks to pray. You say, Pastor, pray for what? Well, first of all, I would first say pray for our encourage the kingdom outreach. Pray for our ministry. Pray for what God wants to do here. How we can use us not only for inreach, but for outreach. Of course, I need pray for your leadership. Pray for yours truly as well. I need that. My wife needs that. Pray for us. Of course, our world needs prayer. Amen? Amen. So, let's, let's start. We can start locally and work our way up. So let's pray for leaving. Pray for your neighborhood first. The people in your neighborhood. Huh? In our city, in our state, in our nation, in our world. Huh? Okay. So with those three two-hour blocks, 6.30 6 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. You say, Pastor, how long should I pray? Pray as long as the Lord needs you. As long as the Lord needs you. All right? And then, after you pray for all those other things, then you can focus on yourself. <laughs> See, that's the, that's the first challenge. We first want to start with ourselves. No, let's think of it. Let's start with others first. And don't forget to give God praise first, huh? Don't forget to give God thanks. Because you may not be exactly where you want to be right now, but some of us can say, thank God we're not where we used to be. Do I have one witness in me? Amen. Huh? We may not be where we want to be, but we're not where we used to be. Amen. So we're grateful for, for God's movement in our lives. So now we can start praying. What are we praying for? For God's provision. We all have needs, don't we? And the Bible says that he will meet our needs according to his riches and his glory in Christ Jesus. Provision. That's one. There are other needs, so don't worry about it. Pray for his protection. His protection. His covering over us and ourselves and, of course, over the people we care about. Huh? His protection. We pray also uh, provision, protection. We pray for peace. Peace. Peace in our homes, peace in our lives. Peace in the world. What, 
that requires that people's hearts are changed. Huh? People think Putin, think Putin do only doing this because he's a bad guy. Or oh, what you doing because you're a bad guy? No, people need a heart change. Because what's in your heart is what comes out in your life. Whatever you go out in, that's what comes out. Huh? It's not what's outside of a man that defiles him. It's what's on the inside. And we need hearts, a heart change. Everywhere in the world. Pray for peace. So provision, protection, peace. And lastly, pray for God's power, his strength to endure. Because we all want to do something. Huh? We need his power, his power to endure, to, to persevere in the midst of all the stuff going on that we might get to where he wants us to be. So that's quite a list of things to pray about. Detail, city, neighborhood, city, state, family, all. Yeah, we go three time frames and give it that. And what I'd like you to do in any of those time frames is to write down not only what you pray about, but at the end of the month, let's see what God will do or will have done with all the things we pray about. We pray for Tracy, and there is. <laughs> Pray for Tracy, there he is. Ain't that something? Just said his name not long ago. There he is. Just walk in. Praise God. So, and we're, we're praying not just because we don't have nothing else to do. We're praying because God is a God who answers prayer. Amen. Yeah. So, 6 30 a.m. to 8 30 a.m. If you're not, if you're uh, not an early morning person, which is me, I got to get up and pray. <laughs> okay? 12 30 p.m. to 2 30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Stop and pray. And just turn on this a little bit. We, have, we don't have our EKO notebook uh, or whatever book you want. So you can document the things you pray about. Mark the day. Mark the time. And let's see what God will do in your life and in our lives when we pray. Amen. Father, I just thank you for this prayer, concert of prayer. Let it not be something that burdens us, but opens us up to a, a further communication with you. Lord, let, let us not only talk to you, but to hear from you about which way to go, what to do, just what you have for us. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Praise God. We're still in our the Jesus Was Your Doctor series. And we have a, a, a third message in this console that provides us with a, a couple of other opportunities to look at what we need to do to be spiritually healthy. Last time we looked at the temperature, we looked at our heart, we looked at our mind. And, and we started to, find, we started to ask some questions about where we are with regard to those things as it relates to God's uh, desires for us. Are we spiritually healthy in those, in those ways? Are we hot or are we cold? Or are we lukewarm, which the Bible says God has no, no, no place for that. All right, you'd rather, I'd rather be on fire or chill, but I don't need you going down the middle. Huh? Uh, how about our heart? Again, I just mentioned it. Uh, what's the challenge of having a heart that longs for God, that seeks after God, that belongs to God, a heart that He changes, that goes His way along with His purpose in the world? And how about that mind? What are you thinking about? What's on your mind from day to day? Is it God's stuff, or is it, or is it just the world's stuff? I know for you young people here, with, with social media so rampant today, we didn't have that when I was younger, but you all have it. And so many young people are giving their opinion of themselves of what people they don't even know are saying about them. What sense does that make? But it's real. Young people are killing themselves because of what somebody said to them on social media. Can you imagine? 
Let's, let's find out what God says about us and believe that. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to say our foundation for our message was in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, um, verses 19 and 20. And I'll just read them uh, for you this moment. If you want to go ahead, you can. But Paul is saying to these believers, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? That's for the believer. Okay? Your body, this thing created in God's image, is a temple. And the temple was a very important place. So this body is important. If not to you, to God. Because he wants to use it. He wants to use it for his glory. He wants you to tell somebody else about Jesus. He wants you to be a servant of his. Somebody shape or form. So your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is in you? Whom you have for God. And he says, and you are not your own. So, for all the rights you think you have, and for all the possessions you want to live up, this is my body. God Paul says, no, it's God's body. It belongs to him. Be careful how you use it. For you were bought at a price, and the price is the cross that we just reference in our communion service. The cross that Jesus hung on for you and me. You were paid, you were bought at the very price of the life of Jesus himself. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Hmm. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 4 is a place I want to take you to for just a moment as we take, take a look at a couple of other parts of this spiritual counsel. Proverbs chapter 4. This is a book of wisdom. And when we need wisdom, I was talking to uh, a brother yesterday at our uh, men's meeting over at uh, Mary Ellen's. And, and he said that, you know, I, I wish we were talking about fatherhood. We were talking about uh, ma male presence in, in children's lives. And he said, man, I wish there was a handbook. I wish there was a manual for how to raise children. I said, there is. <laughs> there is. You ain't going to find it at Barnes and Noble, or maybe you will. But it is, it's, it's a biblical reference that helps you to understand what you should do. And, and I regret God help me but that I didn't follow it as well as I should have. There's consequences for that. Huh? You'll hurt your kids in ways that you never would have imagined. You'll say things and do things that, that you pray to God that you you don't regret for the rest of your life. But God is a healer. Do I have a witness to you today? Romans tells us, Romans 1 tells us that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, no. no condemnation. So you don't have to walk around with a cloud over your head. When God has forgiven you, here it is, here's a new slide for somebody today. When God has forgiven you, you're forgiven. You don't have to worry about forgiving yourself. Okay? When God forgives you, you're forgiven. Amen. Can somebody accept that today? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Look at what it says here, Proverbs chapter 4. I'm going from starting at verse 20 and going down. And again, I've read this before, but I want you to see it again. My son says, Give attention to my words. Incline your ear. Again, all the body parts are here. Incline your ear to my sayings. You know what? There, there was a time when somebody would speak to you, and, and you know when you're speaking to your child, and you want to make sure that, that, that they hear you, you lean in. <laughs> huh? See, when we, when we sit back, we, we chill, right? Chill like a building. <laughs> if you come to your child, and they've been, been crossing their legs, they've folded their arms, oh, we got some problem up in here. Oh, we got a problem. Oh, Father, there's about to be a man on a man in the name of Jesus. So we, what are we going to know? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Huh? Have you ever, have you ever got real close to somebody's face? Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying here? Stop playing. It was, it was a brother. 
brother at the breakfast yesterday. He said he was, he was 15 and his mom was whooping. He was getting whooping. And it wasn't, he said it wasn't hurting. So he had folded his arms and turned his back on his mom while she was whooping. And then he said, I started patting my foot like this. <laughs> while, while she was, you know, getting him the, get the belt. And because it wasn't hurting. He said, he said, why are you going around to a grown man? That's what he said, he was looking in his mind. And he said that behind him was their fireplace. And in the next few moments, she grabbed one of them logs and stole off the back of his head. He said he woke up about two days later. <laughs> he woke up about two days later. <laughs> he never turned his back on his mom again. I'll tell you that. What am I saying? Children, listen. Listen, forget me for all of that. That's a joke. But that's what he's saying. Give attention to what I'm saying. And just as, as, as we want our kids to listen, God wants us to listen. He wants us to, to listen. It's not that you don't know. It's just that you don't do what you know. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. We have knowledge. But the question is, do we have wisdom? He says, incline your ear. Come on, lean in to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your what? Your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart, guard your heart with all diligence. Listen, not only guard your heart, but guard the heart of those you love. Be careful and mindful for the things you're saying and the things you're doing that, that, that are hurting them. We'll talk about that in a minute. Guard, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from your, uh, from you a deceitful mouth. Huh? What we have to tell this to church folks? Put away a deceitful mouth. That means you're trying to hurt folks on purpose. You're trying to lie to people on purpose and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyes look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Be mindful of where you're going. Huh? My, my old parents said, everywhere you can go ain't somewhere you should go. Hello? Everywhere you can go ain't somewhere you should go. Ponder the path of your feet. Think about it. Should I really be going there? Should I really be going with them? Huh? Let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. My Lord. And so the Proverbs gives us a, a great journey through the things we need to be mindful of. Be mindful of. Pastor, what are the things that are part of the console today? Well, again, we looked at temperature last time, hard mind. I, I want to take a moment to, to take a look at Three specific things today as it relates to how we how we, how we become spiritually healthy. This time, if Jesus was your doctor, what does he want to look at? He wants to check your vision today. Huh? Now, there was a time when I didn't wear these spectaculars here. I could see, but I tell you what, if I got them on, y'all just look like a bunch of blobs out there. God wants to check your vision. Here are my questions for this console today. How is your spiritual vision? What do you do? What, what do you find yourself looking at from day to day? Huh? I think you might be a little conviction falling on some of us today. What do you find yourself looking at? And I have to testify and come, come clean about, you know, the stuff I look at, the law order, you know, binge, Netflix. That's why I got all the stuff. Because you can finish watching the show, and you ain't even got to turn on the next show. The next show just comes off. And before you know it, you're going to spend two hours, three hours, four hours doing what? Watching foolishness. Not maybe watching stuff you want to watch. So many, so many people are, are watching and living vicariously through the people, the real housewives. And the hip-hop hip -hop this and the hip-hop that. They're living by character between these up with the Kardashians and all. You know the Kardashians have been on for what, 20 years? Whatever it's been? The fact that they've been on 10 days bothers me. <laughs> but they're still on. And people are still watching. My Lord. For what? So what do you find yourself looking at? 
from day to day. If Jesus was sitting next to you, would he want to look at it with you? Can you see God's purpose and plan for your life? I'm talking about vision today. Can you see it? <coughs> Can you see it? Well, one of the things, one of the questions I want to ask you, one of the questions I think Jesus would ask you is, can you see yourself the way I see you? Huh? Can, do you see yourself the way Jesus sees you? Well, you say, Pastor, how is that? Well, let me tell you. In Christ, you can see yourself as love. We were talking about the love of Jesus this morning. Guess what? You can see yourself as love. That's the foundation of, of your relationship with Christ. Can, can you see yourself today as forgiven? Huh? So many people walk around with guilt, shame, regret, and condemnation. No, Jesus says today, I'm saying to you that in Christ you are forgiven and not only forgiven, but redeemed. He has exchanged his life for your life. His new nature. You see, some of the frustration of people who don't want to come is they think they got to get themselves right before they come. Come and get right. Huh? See, that's why we don't have as many men here as we should. Huh? They, 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 they got every excuse in the book why they can't come. Every excuse in the book. Come and let the Lord touch you. Let him touch you. Not only love, but chosen. You know you're chosen by the Lord? You didn't choose him. He chose you. How do you see yourself today? What's your vision? Your spiritual vision? How about this? You know what? In Christ, you've been adopted. I don't know about the family that you, that you have, your blood family, but you know what? In Christ, you're part of a, a now a heavenly spiritual family. That, that, that I pray will love you in ways that your natural family may not. May put up with you in ways that they won't. You've been adopted, grafted in to God's heavenly family, the body of Christ. Somebody needs today to know that they, they are valued and significant. Now, how do you see yourself? In Christ, you are valued and significant. That's why Jesus often used the metaphor of the sheep and lambs, because they were precious in that time. You didn't want to just go, you, you, you had to kill a sheep to eat, but you know what, if somebody just wanted to just, just kill a sheep for no, for no apparent business, now they would kill something very valuable. And Jesus said that my, my sheep here, they know my voice. Valuable. So if anybody told me that you were valuable this morning, I'm telling you, in Christ, you're valuable. <coughs> you're significant. You're loved. Today. what 
God is leading you to. I want a reflex. Reaction time. Reaction time. Mark it up in Philippians chapter 2. 5, 6, and 7. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. This is what the sacrifice of Jesus made. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And so when you think about your reflections, you think about what Jesus did. He humbled himself. Part of, part of, part of our life must be, must be grounded in humility. Also in obedience. Obedience. When we think about that once again as parents, we, that's the one thing we want from our children. We want obedience. We want compliance. We want them to do what we told them to do. But they have their own thought processes about how to do those things, don't they? <laughs> we want the trash taken out. We come back 20 minutes later, the trash is still there. Huh? We want the room clean. We come back two hours later, the room still ain't clean. Hello? We want obedience. We want compliance. Well, guess what? So does God. Mm -hmm. He wants to give you instruction, and he wants to know that once he gives it to you, you'll follow it. Huh? And why do we want to do and, and just like God, why do we want that? Because we believe we're, we're acting in our children's best interest. Our kids used to think that I was a star baby when we did. When I came to the refrigerator, somebody ate my food. <laughs> or used my bad time. It is a terrible thing when you come out of the shower and the towel you thought was dry is wet. <laughs> huh? You were already wet. You come out of the shower and dry off and the towel you got is wet. <laughs> what good is that? <laughs> and of course, I'm going to start reading the little bit. I want to know. I got one simple question. Who you are? And of course, the kid's like, well, you know, we do. I don't know who's in there. I don't know you. You know, what do we do? Well, when you're on the tower, I just use the tower. If they want on it, then it might, might affect somebody else. But we do that, don't we? We do that. God wants, to be, wants us to be mindful that our actions have consequences beyond us. The things we do have ramifications and consequences that affect other people. So when somebody goes to, to, to Olive Garden and they come home with some shrimp and weed and they put it in the refrigerator and they want to eat it the next day, it is not incumbent on you because you won't be like Trimley Wee to go in there and eat this red Trimley Wee. Wee. And you know what that's going to Some problems. <laughs> some issues. It's going to cause some issues. We're going to have to land on the hands. Once again. And not in a spiritual sense. Come on, y'all. These are things that are so simple. Really. But when we're just thinking about ourselves and not others, which really is the heart of Christ, because he spent his time having compassion on others, looking on the issues of others, healing others, delivering others. He even said in Mark 10, 45, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give my life a ransom for me. So if indeed we're going to have the heart of Christ, we must have the life of Christ. Jesus in and Jesus out. Hello? Come on now. And when, when we know we've heard from the Lord, when we know we've heard from the Lord, the question then becomes, how do we respond? Where is our reflex? And so we're mindful. Jesus says it very clearly in John that my sheep, they know my voice. 
So indeed we are of Christ or in Christ. We know when it's him speaking to us. My sheep, they know my voice. And he says, they will not follow someone who is not the shepherd. Huh? They won't follow somebody who's not the shepherd. They know who I am. And how do they do that? We have a relationship. Praise you, Jesus. So we take a quick look at vision. We check our reflexes. And lastly, as we conclude, how about our hearing? Anybody got any ear problems? Any problems hearing the Lord? But it begs the question. As we do this checkup, what are you listening to? Most often. See, sometimes a lot of what we're thinking and a lot of what gets in our heart comes in through the ear gate. Not just from the eye gate, but in the ears. What are we listening to? Who are we listening to? Are we taking the time to hear from the Lord? Are we taking the time to hear what he has to say to us? And I'm asking you as you pray, don't just give out your prayer, but wait to hear what God has to say in response. Huh? Prayer is two-way communication. It's just not me saying, God, this is what I want. No, God says, no, this is what I want. This is where I want you to go. This is what I need you to do. So be mindful. How are you hearing from God? Listen to what he says here. In Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, and set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Be mindful of what you're listening to. What you're listening to. Matter of fact, let me mark my other note. In John, John 14, I'll give you that for homework. John 14, John 16, rather. Right? John 16. 12 through 18. 16, 12 through 18. Let me just read it real quick. I can read it. John 16, 12, 13. I still have many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will speak not of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me, Jesus says, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he will take of mine and declare to you. If you love me, listen, keep my commandments. Huh? And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, and who will abide with you the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it, because it neither sees him nor it knows, nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you. And will be in you. And I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you, Jesus says. And so as you think about, again, your reflexes, as you think about your hearing, ask yourself, what am I listening to? Who am I listening to? And am I hearing what God wants me to hear so that I can do what God wants me to do? And if we can and if we do that, because if we're not careful, we get in the flesh and we find ourselves striking out at folks in ways that defame and deface our witness and our walk with Christ. And now we have to confess, apologize, and let the others know. What do we need to help us? We need regular doses of the word. We need continued investment in prayer. We need continued fellowship with the spirit. And we need to, to, to know that we are spiritually healthy. Garbage in, garbage out. Make sure that the nutrition that you're getting, the word that you're getting, the food that you're feeding on is really nourishing your spiritual body that you might live the life in 2024 and beyond that Christ has for you. Does anybody want to be sick? 
But is health just going to happen because you want it to? Or does it require an effort? Does it require conscientiousness and intentionality? It does. It does. So I'm encouraging you today in this regard. Stay away from foolishness, worthlessness, and idle, idle time. Let God do what he wants to do in your life. That you might be spiritually healthy for his glory. Praise you, Jesus. There's more to come next week in our final council, but I want to pray with you as we conclude and pray that God would confirm in you that you are loved, forgiven, adopted, valued, empowered, and redeemed. Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you today on this communion Sunday in March of 2024 in Lincoln, Nebraska. You have chosen us for such a time as this. And I pray today, Lord, that there's someone in my hearing, our hearing today, who's been touched at least by something said. Something said. And I pray, Lord, beyond the voice of a mere man, the Spirit of God will move right now. And as I ask you this question, I want you to want your response. Because there are some here today who will say yes to Jesus. And they know exactly what it means. And still yet some who are seeking. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, there's something about what you said that has challenged me. I haven't felt love. I haven't felt value. I haven't felt significant. And if Jesus, if knowing Jesus is, is what I need in that regard, boy, do I want it. But beyond that, friend, is something more eternal. See, because every person has to ask four questions in their life. Where did I come from? What's my purpose? How do I know the difference between right and wrong? And what happens to me when I die? And all of those answers can be satisfied with a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need to know this Jesus. I need to give my life to him. Because I know I'm not choosing him. He's already chosen me. And I want to commit today to walk with him and to know all the things personally and intimately that you talked about here today. Is there somebody who can just slip up their hand and say, yeah, that's me. I'm at one. I'm at one. Yes, thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I recognize today that without you, my path is sure. It's certain separation from you for the rest, for all of my life. I'm going to spend eternity somewhere, and I want it to be with you. And so today, I want to commit my life. I want full surrender today to, to your will and your purpose. I recognize your, your, your sacrifice for me, your redemption for me. And by your divine power and by your divine nature, I, I want to change. I want to go in your direction. I receive your forgiveness today. I receive the act of sacrifice on my behalf. And today I say yes to you. I say no to sin in all of its forms. And yes to you. Now, adopt me as you adopt me into your family, as you receive me as your own. Graft me in now that I might be a part of what you're doing here at EKO or wherever you have me to go. Help me to have a changed heart, a changed 
mouth, a changed vision, a changed hearing. And let my reflexes be certain because I know it's you who's speaking to me. I know it's you in your spirit that's calling me from darkness into light. For there is no fellowship with darkness and light. I come to you, Jesus, just as I am. Knowing I can't change myself, but you can. I come to you today in full surrender. And I do it in your precious name. And thank you for your sacrifice for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're here and say, Pastor, I haven't really made a decision yet, but I want to slip up my hand and say, would you pray for me? That I might hear better? That my reflexes might be better? That my vision might be better? Would you slip up your hand and say, I'm, 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 I'm standing in the need of prayer today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say it with me as you please. Jesus is the answer. For the world today, above him has no other Jesus is the way. Thank you. 